My name is Derek Witt, and I'm with the Data Science and Integration Group within PPQ Field Operations. Today, I'll be walking you through how to use a Power BI report, also known as a dashboard, to quality control some IFAS program data. IFAS is a system of record within PPQ where much of our domestic and other data gets put into, and the easiest way to interface with that data is often through a Power BI dashboard. We create Power BI dashboards to allow easy access to the data that comes in and out of IFAS. I'll dive into the details here in a second, but before I get into that, what I'd like to show you is how to access this. There are many different ways you can get to this link. If you're watching this video, you've likely been emailed this link at some point. But the main housing for these Power BI reports is on what's called the MRP report server. We don't expect you to understand or uh, how to get to that. So what we've done in order to make it easier to access is we've put them on the DART DDII or Domestic Data Improvement Initiative website. And so this is a SharePoint based website that has a lot of information related to domestic programs. But in this case, we're gonna be interested in the QC dashboards folder. Anyone watching this should have access to it. And the view I'm giving you is actually for demo purposes only. But you'll see many more dashboards added to this folder over time. You can bookmark this link once you've come to it one time. And again, this communication on this link will be sent out to you at some point if it hasn't been already. When you're in this folder, you'll be able to just launch a dashboard in Power BI based on the URLs that we've embedded in here. So for ease of the demo, I've already launched it. But what we're looking at here is the default view of a Power BI dashboard. Typically, you're met with a data disclaimer and some general background information on what this report or dashboard is showing you. A key feature of Power BI dashboards is the ability to create tabs similar to how you would in other Microsoft products like Excel and things like that. So IFAS is a unique system because it's a cooperator developed system that is very hard to get data out of if you uh, tried to go directly into the system, especially in bulk. And so what we've done for these quality control reports or dashboards is that we have set them up in such a way that we pull the data out of IFAS and consolidate it in such a way that makes it easier for folks to look at and understand uh, the data. And you may notice right away some things that look familiar. We've got you know, a filter that allows us to filter by a state, uh, maybe an office, maybe a user, or maybe in this case, an error description that was caught during quality control. These dashboards are dynamic. So by clicking any filter, any pie chart, anything on the map, you will instantaneously see the dashboard filter, all the other widgets uh, and charts to kind of show you what you wanna see. So in the case of IFAS, you may be responsible for a single office. And uh, even at more granular levels, you may be responsible for uh, you know, a, just a small subset of sites within a specific office, or maybe you're only interested in the sites that you've, say, created. So you could filter, for example, by your office and then also by your user. We'll get into editing the data in IFAS a little bit later. For now, I'd just like to show you how to navigate and use the dashboard. So in this case, we're working with IFAS. So it's highly recommended using this tip up in the header bar here to start an IFAS session before you really get going on this. And that will allow you to click utilize the links that have been provided to specific information within IFAS. And so again, for ease of the demo, I have launched uh, the IFAS web user interface. And we're gonna go through an example here of how you may decide to edit data. So let's say, for example, you're interested in only data from a specific state. So here, again, this being test data, I will grab Arkansas. And so we can see there's multiple offices that have input data in Arkansas. We can see that there's a handful of different errors here, most related to uh, the trapping activity. So maybe we're missing an install on a site or we it's gotten to the end of the year and we haven't seen any removal activities, or maybe there's just duplicates, things like that. So let's say in this case, you're only interested in the sites that don't have a removal activity. Well, there's a few different ways you can get to that information. The easiest is to click on the pie chart. And then you'll see as I did that, not only did the map and all the charts and the uh, total errors widget filter, the table has also filtered in this case. And so at this point, you've, you've taken a thousand errors that was on the default view of our dashboard, and you've drilled down into just 19 of them, again, that likely you are interested in. 
And so you have a few different options once you get to this point. Again, IFAS is a system of record, so you'd, you'd like to edit the data directly in, in IFAS, which is why we've provided these links. But let's say maybe you're a, a plant safeguarding specialist and you have a technician that you'd like to take a look at these or, or a similar example. Well, these Power BI reports make it very easy for you to export these, this table information to Excel. So if you notice here where my mouse is hovering, there's a little more options button. And if I click that, I can select export data. A dialog quickly pops up that allows you to choose either Excel or CSV. And then you can instant, pretty much instantaneously export that data and then have it open within seconds to see what's going on here. And you'll notice too, what it'll often do is it'll put a uh, description here on how you filtered the data just again. So if you are sending it to someone or just to remind you that, by the way, you filtered this data to this level. And so then you could prepare this spreadsheet or maybe put in some comments, reformat it, and then send it off to someone in your office who may need to uh, take a look at it. So again, one of the primary purposes of these Power BI dashboards is the ease of exporting data for your use. And we'll have some more example videos uh, coming soon on that. Okay, so we've used this example of drilling down into uh, not only an office, but a specific type of error. And so in this case, why don't we go ahead and follow a URL directly to IFAS. And so what I've done is again, because I had already opened a blank IFAS browser session at the beginning of our demo here, when I click these links that are in the, in the dashboard, it instantaneously brings us up to that site, which in this case, it's a site in the IFAS web user interface. Now, in this case, we can see we have a few different activities here. One was in uh, late September and one was in April. And if you recall again from our filters, we're looking at where we don't have a removal activity. So typically the way our trapping protocols work is a, a removal will happen sometime at the end of the season, which can be anywhere from late summer into the fall and even into the early winter. Um, but what we can do is we can investigate each of these activities, which in this case, because we're looking at removal, I'm not really interested in the April one. I'll look and see what this activity on 930 was. The dialogue quickly pops up and you can see that the uh, site was actually inaccessible in this case. So the, the, the surveyor in this, this case likely went out to the site, uh, couldn't get to the trap, and so there, therefore there was no removal activity. In that case, that is not really an error, right? We know that that site was checked at the end of the year and for whatever reason, whether it's private property or other you know, reasons, it was inaccessible. So in this, in this case, we could just jot down, maybe we're tracking this in the spreadsheet we just up, uh, exported and we can say, okay, I, I went and checked this error and then you could have just a column that in your spreadsheet saying, oh, I checked this, but it's okay. We don't need to do anything there. Um, in other cases, and I'll unfilter this by the removal activities, and maybe now we'll look at some duplicate activities, which I'll do by clicking this light blue wedge on the pie chart. So in this case, you can see we zoom into a few areas that all are being flagged with duplicate activities. <clears throat> so we'll do the same thing we just did with the missing removal activity, and we'll follow a site URL into, into the IFAS system, and we'll see that sure enough, right away, this pops out that we have a something that was done on 8.2 and also another um, action that was done on 8.2. And so we can quickly launch these little edit boxes and see that we had a removal on 8.2 followed by a duplicate removal on 8.2 in this case. So we can see that in the activity action here. Now, these we'd rather have obviously more data than not enough data. So duplicates are relatively uh, harmless in terms of uh, the overall issue. But the idea is that if you can catch these throughout the season, we can really end up with cleaner data sets. What you may have noticed in looking at this tab of the dashboard is this is looking at primarily trapping data. Um, so we're again, how the activities are done throughout the season, things like that. But one thing you may notice is as I have filtered this map to Arkansas, is it looks like we have a point in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. So that may make you think, well, maybe we should be checking spatial errors as well. You know, maybe points that don't fall within the contiguous US or within the US and Puerto Rico and Hawaii. And so we've decided to do just that with the sites and locations. 
to where you can come over to this next tab here along the bottom and you can see that we flagged errors based on uh, what we think are spatial problems. So in this case, we can see that you know most of these are Midwest, Arkansas, South Dakota, we've got some Nevada, Idaho, but as you can see on the map, they have been placed in the middle of you know Europe, Asia, oceans. And so this is typically just a, a bad, it could be a bad GPS coordinate collected on the device. It could have been a bulk upload from a spreadsheet where someone mixed up the negative or the positive of the longitude, which if you look at these points in Europe and Asia and you, you kind of track them across, that it's very likely that these ended up with bad longitude values. And same thing can be said for latitudes. And so what we've done on this tab here is we've allowed the user to see spatial records. And in often cases, these just need to be um, either deleted or um, the lat long needs to be modified, things like that. Um, but again, typically the information is generally correct, but in this case, uh, we end up with uh, points that obviously don't make sense on a map. And so all the same ideas apply as the previous tab. We can click on, you know, an office in the bar chart. We could click on a specific point on the map in this case and look at what we've got here and then follow the URL to IFAS. And then if you once you drill deep enough, you'll see that sure enough, the longitude and the latitude actually match for this specific point. So someone accidentally maybe made a copy paste uh, error or something was done in, incorrectly there. So going back to our dashboard, the main purpose of these is to identify errors in real time. This is all retroactive uh, de de uh, demonstration data that's been published for this particular demo. But the dashboard links that you will have access to will be live current season data. So we'll ask that, you know, you go in periodically and you just check, you know, maybe your office doesn't even show up in the dropdown, which means you've checked you don't seem to have any flagged errors, you, you're good to go for that week, you know, and it doesn't need to be done every day, but we, we would like folks to get used to taking a look at their IFAS data through this lens. Anytime you may get stuck with a filter on, so let's say you've, you've drilled down into the data, if I flip back over to the, you know, the activity QC, and let's say you've really gone down into the data here, in this case where you, you've put on a few different filters, and you, you want to kind of get back out of that. Well, the best option for that often is to just refresh your browser. If you ever refresh your URL, you should be able to just get a fresh view of the dashboard. So it'll set you back on the main screen and then you can come back and all your filters will be reset. If you have any issues or if you access this dashboard and the, the charts are blank, the tables are blank, you get some kind of an error, you're always welcome to email us at ppq dot data management mgt at usda.gov. We'll be happy to answer any questions you have related to this dashboard and the Power BI functionality. Thank you.